7.8 magnitude earthquake that struck southern Turkey and northwest Syria on 6 February has killed over 50,000 people and left millions homeless in both countries. The devastating earthquake was followed by a 7.5 magnitude quake just nine hours later and it was one of many. A total of 570 aftershocks were recorded within 24 hours of the earthquake and more than 10,000 have since hit the region. The frequency and intensity of the aftershocks have since diminished, but the tremors continue to be a threat. In this episode of Here's Why, let's talk about the why behind the aftershocks. Seismologists define aftershocks as tremors triggered by a large earthquake, close in time and location. Because many of these aftershocks are large themselves, they start their own chain of additional aftershocks, posing threat to buildings already damaged, also further endangering and even trapped inside the debris, as well as the rescuers. On the other hand, smaller aftershocks can also disrupt rescue and relief work and cause further damages. The aftershocks can occur for weeks, months, and in some cases, years after a major earthquake. Although the frequency and intensity generally decrease over time, it varies with factors such as the intensity and depth of the main shock and tectonic plates. Earthquakes that originate deep underground tend to see fewer aftershocks. So I spoke to a leading earthquake scientist, Dr. Judith Hubbard, and asked her, what are aftershocks? So earthquakes, the name earthquake tells you what it is. It's when the earth is shaking. Um, but most of the time, we know that those are caused by faults that are slipping underground, uh, faults that are related to tectonic movements, where the, the stresses from the slowly moving tectonic plates build up on the faults over time. And when the faults have enough stress on them to cause them to slip, they can sometimes slip in very small events and sometimes in very large catastrophic events. Um, and when that happens, a lot of energy emanates out from the slip area and it causes shaking over a very wide area. Foreshocks and aftershocks are really just earthquakes. Um, and we call them foreshocks and aftershocks because they're related to other earthquakes. So that's not telling us that they're they're different processes of the same process, but they're somehow triggered by or triggering um, another earthquake or set of earthquakes. So a foreshock, we don't know it's a foreshock until later on. It's an earthquake that happens before a larger earthquake. So it's kind of a, a warning in a sense, except we only know it after the fact. And then an aftershock is an earthquake that's triggered by a large earthquake. Um, and they're the same thing as regular earthquakes, except that in this case, some of the stress that's being put on the fault is not the slow tectonic movement of the plates, but rather the sudden movement of another earthquake um, where the crest suddenly moved, maybe centimeters or meters in a matter of minutes. And there is a, um, a Dutch individual who has claimed to have predicted this earthquake. And indeed, a few days before the earthquake, he put out a statement saying that at some point, in the future, there would be an earthquake in a very broad region that included Turkey. Of course, any person who looked at an active fault map or a map of seismic hazard could have told you that at some point in the future, a large earthquake would occur in Turkey. Uh, people have been saying that for as long as they've been talking about earthquakes. Um, and so, you know, no one would be more excited than me if we could predict earthquakes. It would be one of the best things to ever happen. Um, the problem is that People who make claims about prediction are usually putting out a lot of predictions, many, many hundreds or thousands of predictions. And then when one of them comes true, in a sense, they'll only look at that one and they'll, they'll talk about that one, but not the other ones that never happened. Um, there are some things we can do, of course, to think about seismic hazard before earthquakes happen. And the biggest one is to think about where are the active faults? How big will these earthquakes be on those active faults? How often will those earthquakes occur? And then what will happen when those earthquakes happen? Um, and we do that using geology. We map the faults. We put in instruments to see how fast the crust is moving. We look at the historical record and the archaeological record. 
and the sedimentological record, and sometimes even the record in tree rings. There's all sorts of things that people look at to try to understand the history of earthquakes in a region. And then they feed that into physical models, uh, geophysical models, trying to understand how the earth actually slips. There's lots of people working on this issue. Um, astrology has nothing to do with it. It's true that the changing gravitational forces of the earth and the sun and the moon have some impacts on the earth. We see tides every day, but of course we see tides every day. It's not like this once in 500 years effect. If, if tides were causing earthquakes, we would see them every day. Um, we know that it's really the tectonics and the fluids underground and the faults themselves and related earthquakes that are the things that are responsible for earthquakes. Uh, the other thing people can do for earthquakes is something called earthquake early warning which sounds like a prediction, but it's not. Uh, earthquake early warning um, is a process where the earthquake starts in one place, and then it's not an instantaneous process. It starts, and then it might take a minute for the earthquake to complete the slip on the fault if for a very large event. And then it would take many more minutes for the shaking from that earthquake to reach different cities in the area. So um, it turns out that when you use a cell phone, the signal travels faster than seismic waves. So if we can detect the earthquake early enough, we can let people know using their cell phones that this shaking might be approaching them and they should take cover or take action. But prediction is not possible.